When people think about home theater, most people think about two things. Uh, the first is the surround sound system. They think about the speakers, whether it's a 5.1 or a 7.1 or a Dolby Atmos setup and subwoofers and all that sort of stuff. But the second thing that people think about is going to be the picture, uh, whether that's a large big screen TV or in most people's cases, a projector, uh, projecting a image up on a screen. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the history of the home theater projector here in my theater, uh, starting with this one right here, which is the first projector I bought, all the way up to my most recent projector that's up on the back wall behind me. So stay tuned. So like I said in my intro, the two things people mostly think about with home theater are going to be the surround sound system and the image quality. And that's going to vary from person to person uh, depending on budget and room limitations and other factors. Uh, but for me, I always wanted not only the surround sound system, I always wanted a projector with a big screen. Uh, as big as I could logistically fit in my room. And so when I first started my home theater journey, uh, as I mentioned in other videos, I had just the TV. I had a 65 inch uh, Vizio like LCD TV that I got a number of years ago, like, probably like 10 years ago, on a Black Friday deal at Walmart. And it was an okay TV and actually we still have that TV. It's actually in our bedroom. We hardly ever use it because we never watch TV in the bedroom, but it's just sitting on a TV stand in our bedroom. And I use that as the original video source when I started my home theater. But following that, I wanted to venture into getting a projector because I knew that's what I wanted. And it all started with this projector unit that's sitting on the table here in front of me, which I've kept all these these years later, and it's progressed, you know, from there. So to start, uh, this projector here, this is a VVME <laughs> projector. I got this off of Amazon. Um, I think I actually bought this on an Amazon sale. I don't think this was a warehouse deal. I bought this brand new. It's one of only, I think, two projectors I've ever bought that were actually brand new that weren't used. And this was very early on in my home theater journey. So after we had initially got gotten settled here in the house and got moved in and everything, like I said, I started with the TV and just the speakers I brought from our old place over. But eventually down the road, like a year later or so, I knew I wanted to get a projector. And I wasn't well versed in the whole projector market and what was good, what wasn't. Well, I shouldn't say good, it's all relative and subjective, but and for my taste, what was good, what wasn't good, what was feasible and applicable in my room here. And as I said in other videos, my room was flip-flop the other way. So the left side over here, uh, your right, my left, would have been the front of the room and then this side back over here, my right, your left. Uh, would have been the rear of the theater at that point in time. And I wanted to start out with a projector, something small, something not expensive, just to like get my feet wet with it. So way back, and this would have been like 2016 or 17, I bought this. Uh, like I said, this is a VVME projector. Uh, this is an LED <laughs> projector. Uh, I bought this uh, along with just a 100-inch uh, pull-down screen, almost like something you would have seen uh, back in like a classroom at a school. Uh, just the standard white with black border pull-down manual screen. Uh, I paid, like I think at the time, like $100 for this projector off Amazon, and the screen was less than that. It was like $50 or something at that point in time. And it was real 
cheap you know just the cheapest options i can get a 16 by 9 screen and a 16 by 9 projector uh this unit for what it is it had a lot of really good reviews and at the time i didn't know any better uh, but for what this is, it's a decent bargain. I, I don't even know if they make these anymore, uh, if you could even find them. But like this unit here doesn't have a whole lot of contrast. Uh, I don't even know what the specs are. If I find them, I'll put them up on the screen as I'm talking here. But it doesn't have a whole lot of contrast. The black levels aren't that good. Uh, it's fairly bright because it's an LED projector, so it's fairly bright. The lens... If you look in here, this is plastic <laughs> in here. I don't know if you can see it's a plastic lens. So the focus uniformity and all that sort of stuff, not very good. Uh, you can't get the image to be extremely focused all around. You can kind of focus in on certain parts. And if you rotate the focus, you know, <laughs> here, um, you're going to focus in on one side of the image. The other side is going to blur. It has, if I scoot this around has HDMI and all that, but it doesn't even have a lens shift. All it has is a hey, keystone correction knob that you turn left and right to tilt the image. So no lens shift, none of that. No zoom. Um, and so I had to find a way of mounting this um, with a very cheap projector mount to my ceiling at a distance that would have filled the 100 inch screen that I had at the time. And it had to be dropped way down because of the throw. There was no lens shift. Like I said, it had to be dead center with the image. It caused a lot of problems. But overall, for an intro, like, projector, this one wasn't bad. And like I said, it had good reviews on Amazon. And this started me on my journey of buying home theater projectors. But anyways, this started me on that journey. And I had this for a while, and the problem was it was cumbersome and... The image quality is not that great on it. So I knew I wanted to upgrade eventually. So I held onto this for, I don't know, six months or a year before I bought the next projector, which the rest of these projectors I don't have anymore except for the one that's on my wall back there in this one. So I'll you'll see pictures pop in. But from this, I moved on. I found a sale. I, I had watched sites and was trying to do research to see what, I think would have been a good option for my room here. And I ended up stumbling across an Epson. Uh, actually, the one I bought was not what I had originally thought I was going to purchase. I went into a Best Buy um, in central Illinois and looked at their projector units. And I was actually looking at more of like a 720p conference room style projector that they had on clearance or sale price for four or five hundred dollars at that time and they didn't have any in the little display case uh shelf they had the like display model but they didn't have any of the actual units to buy on their little like cage thing uh, by the projectors uh with, with how best buy was set up at that time it's changed a little bit nowadays but they didn't have them there so they had to go up on a ladder off in their little storage thing to go and get it. And the rep, the worker that was there, ended up grabbing the wrong projector off of the shelf. And when he went to scan it, they were having issues scanning it correctly because they had grabbed the wrong one. Uh, but the long and short of it, they gave it to me for that sale price uh, of the four or 500 or 550, whatever it was out the door. And what I ended up getting at that time was an Epson Powerlite 20, it was either 2030 or 2035 projector, which wasn't bad. And it was better than that conference room level projector that I was looking at because it was 1080p, a pretty high lumen count. Uh, it was 3D capable, which I have never been a fan of 3D. So that never really bothered me or mattered to me. Uh, but it had that it had a decent contrast level and compared to this one here that one was a huge upgrade and it didn't have lens shift or anything either so i had to mount it in a similar spot that i did on this one so that kind of worked out i had to maneuver it a little bit but i got to mount it basically in the same spot here and i held that one for a long time and you'll see there's a picture that'll pop in here 
uh, that I've used in a couple of my videos where I'll circle it. You'll see that's the actual projector that was in that picture on the mount on the wall that'll come in here in a second. And that one I used for a long time. I actually used the entire life of the original lamp that came with that one. And when it started to have flicker issues, uh, you know, two or 3,000 hours into its life, uh, my wife actually bought me a replacement lamp to put in that projector. And that was the first time I had ever gotten a replacement lamp. So I had had that thing for probably like two years, two to three years uh, of use at that point. And she got me a replacement lamp. And the problem was, again, because I wasn't well-versed in projectors and all that sort of stuff, when I replaced the lamp on it, I actually ended up using canned air and doing some things to like clean out or what I thought was going to clean out the interior of the projector and ended up shooting a whole bunch of dust blobs onto the LCD panels. And when I put it back on the mount and put it back on uh, the screen with the image, I had dust blobs everywhere. And that really like crushed me at the time because I couldn't get rid of them. No matter what I did, I took it apart again and tried. I even bought a uh, camera cleaning kit that I still have today that has like a air blaster thing that's like a hand pump that doesn't use canned air and a bunch of other like cleaning stuff. And I, I tried and tried and I couldn't get the dust blobs off that projector image. And that really like crushed me because I really enjoyed that projector. And like I said, I had only this as a reference and it was like a big step up over this one. So I decided I'm going to have to get a new one. And this kind of leads me into a period in time where I tried a bunch of different projectors before I finally settled on something. And it was really a learning curve and a learning time for me in terms of features and different stuff on projectors. So after that projector, I ended up buying through Amazon again, uh, another warehouse deal. I bought, I think it was a ViewSonic projector. It was like a smaller a blackish gray one. Again, if I find the info, it'll pop in here. But a ViewSonic uh, DLP projector that had really good reviews at the time for another, you know, comparable price, you know, four or $500 on the warehouse deal. And I bought that and I didn't realize at that point about throw ratios. So that one had a different throw ratio than this in my Epson. And I couldn't figure out how to get that image to fit my screen that I had at the time. And I couldn't move my mount because of the way I had it mounted. If I moved it up more, it'd be too close. If I moved it back, it'd be too far away. It was already too big for the screen I had. And at that time, I still had the 100-inch screen. I hadn't upgraded my screen. And I just I couldn't figure it out. So I ended up just returning that because I couldn't make it work with my situation. And seemingly it seemed, you know, nice enough for the handful of minutes, you know, the 20 or 30 minutes I actually got to use it on my screen when I was messing with it. Uh, but it just didn't work, you know, for my application. I, I didn't realize, I didn't know about throw ratios at that time. So I ended up getting rid of that. I returned it and got my money back through Amazon. And then I bought, it was a BenQ... I think 3050 uh, DLP projector. Then another one had really high uh, reviews on Amazon. And a lot of, you know, people said it was a really good projector. Uh, and with that, I bought a different mount. I, I bought a uh, one that was a little more adjustable because then I had started kind of looking at the throw ratios and found out that that would kind of fit my needs. Uh, but again, it didn't really have lens shift or anything like that. So I had to like keystone it and constantly, you know, kind of mess with it on the mount that I bought to replace the old mount with. And I used that one for quite a while. Uh, that one was actually, you know, really good. It was really comparable to that Epson that I had, uh, although the Epson was brighter and had, you know, better like bright color um, image quality. It was lacking on the low end with like the darker colors. The DLP could dig a little bit lower and get some better darker colors, but it wasn't as bright uh, because of the 
DLP system that was in it. But again, it was a pretty good one. But that one, and I won't recap the whole thing, it's in my other videos. That one I used, again, for like a year or two, and then it eventually broke because that mount that I had bought was kind of faulty and partly due to user error. I never really checked on it. But as I would constantly have to fiddle and move the projector back and forth because of the people walking upstairs, uh, it fell off the mount, fell to the ground, broke into a bunch of pieces, and that was that <laughs> on that one. Um, and so when that happened, that's when I made the decision to really like look into a lot of features and look into finding a decent projector that was going to last, that had lens shift, that had a proper throw ratio. And at that point in the interim, when I had that BenQ projector, I got my 120 inch screen, which I still have today in the home theater, uh, to replace the 100 inch screen. And you know, the one I have now is a deluxe screen. It's kind of a lower quality. It's not like, you know, a real high end brand. But I still have it. It's a 1.1 gain screen. It's got the velvet metal frame, you know, border around it uh, and everything. And it's a fixed frame that mounts on the wall. And I've had that ever since. And so I really wanted to do some research and really try and like learn about projectors and find something that was going to work. And so what I ended up getting following the BenQ was a Sony HW45ES projector which at the time I ended up using, uh, again, Amazon, um, the warehouse deals. And I did a special financing like 12 or 24 months, no financing on an Amazon store card. Uh, that to this day is still the most expensive projector in terms of price that I paid for it. I, I bought that projector on the Amazon store card after tax and everything was like $1,300. And that was the most expensive projector I ever bought. And I really liked it. Um, it was better image quality than any projector I had prior to that. It was still bright. Uh, it had better black levels. It had lens shift and uh, focus and zoom and I could move things around. And that's when I, we rotated the room and I put the shelf on my back wall to try and prevent another projector falling from the ceiling uh and it was really nice but the problem with that that ended up coming to pass on that one and why i ended up not having that projector for very long is the lens shift broke and on those sony units on that kind of level of sony projector the lens shift and uh everything was done on like a rotary dial that would be sitting kind of like up here on this projector unit and you would like rotate the dials left and right like one would do the vertical and one would do the horizontal and it was just like a little rotary dial that you would rotate back and forth and those are just attached by like basic rubber bands and the gears and the rubber bands got jammed and then they broke so i couldn't use the lens shift and i couldn't get the image on my screen correctly because it was broken and I couldn't go back and forth. And so I went through a whole process of, I actually sent it in for repair because I didn't want to get rid of it. And the repair cost was going to be as much practically as what I had paid for the projector at that time. So I, I they sent it back and I, you know, ended up contacting Amazon and they just refunded me my money on over return through the warehouse deals. So I sent it back and got my money back on it. And that bummed me out because that one again was a huge step up from the previous projectors I had before that. And so I was really bummed out over that one. But that then leads me into kind of the phase I've been in ever since then, which was all those other projectors, the Epson, the BenQ and that Sony projector were all relatively modern projectors of the time that I bought them. So they, you know, were used and a little bit older, but they were only older by like maybe a year. They'd been in production for like a year, year and a half. So they were all relatively new units that were still in production at that time for those like models and everything. And it started my trend of, I'm going to look at the secondary market because I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money again on one of these things. So it started me looking at eBay and Facebook Marketplace and then like Mercari and then my Goodwill websites later on down the road. 
but that's how I found my very first used, like what would be considered a high-end projector for a used cost. And that's when I found a JVC RS uh, 10 projector on Facebook Marketplace for $150. And again, that was a used unit that was, even at that time, so this would have been like 20... 18 or 19 at the time when I bought this that thing would have been close to 10 years old 8 to 10 years old I think at that that point in time and I got it from somebody who pulled it out of a home theater of a house they moved into and they bought a new projector 150 bucks and it was at that point in time again the best image quality I had ever seen because the black levels were so much better than any projector prior to that and the colors were comparable to the other ones and the lamps uh weren't too expensive for those units and i bought that one and put it up on my shelf and used that for a while you know and i got several hundred hours then out of it but then that one started to show flickering and stuff again in the image and so i decided well why don't i look at the market and see instead of buying another lamp uh for like a hundred dollars you know now i'm ended up spending more than I paid for this actual projector. Maybe I could sell this one and maybe I could get something a little bit newer that was still older. So I, you know, searched and kind of looked through a bunch of places. And again, on Facebook Marketplace, I found a JVC RS-15 projector, which was like the next generation newer than that RS-10. And ended up, you know, buying that from somebody for a hundred dollars. So it was less than the one I bought prior to that, even though it was like a year later, or year and a half later. And that one was even better than the first one. And uh, I used that for a while. And that one was another one that I used up until the lamp that was in it started to act up. And then when I looked at the cost of the lamps, I thought, well, is it worth buying another lamp for it? Or should I maybe just try and sell it and buy something newer? And so after another like year, year and a half of that, I ended up selling that one and buying a JVC RS-46 off of eBay. So I bought, bought that one uh, and I bought a replacement lamp for that one and put that down here. And that was my mainstay from that point, which would have been about 20... 2020 maybe 2021 for several years up until I got this most recent projector that's up here uh, and and all those JVCs were really good and they had good black levels they had good uh, color you know quality and you know the brightness and everything was suitable for my my needs they all had powered zoom they all had powered focus uh, powered lens shift, you know, all this stuff. So it was, those projectors were way, way like high end compared to everything I had had prior to them. And I really enjoyed them. But what ended up happening, as I've mentioned in my other videos, and maybe I've got a problem, but I know a lot of people uh, also do this in the uh, hobby here. I just always was looking and reading forums and like just looking for deals that would come up. And I would see things from time to time, but you know, they would always end up pricing out over what I thought was a good price and what was comparable to what I had already had, you know, and I didn't think the the gap in quality, the, you know, economy of scale, the ret return on investment was good enough to buy something newer. And so I had always watched a lot of these older units, you know, JVCs especially that were coming up. And uh, in just reading forums and stuff on like AVS forum and, you know, home theater websites and different places, I, I found this thread, which I'll link below, which I think I've linked in other videos, which was a thread on AVS forums about older high-end DLP projectors. So projectors that were extremely high-end back in the late 2000s, early to mid 2010s, that were like super high end. They were like the highest of the high end stuff you could buy at the time. So we're talking like 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand plus on some of these units. And the whole thread was dedicated to 
finding these units at like bare bones market prices because people had moved on from them because they weren't 4k and jvc had kind of dominated the market in home theater along with sony uh and epson and stuff in there a little bit too but a lot of people who are real enthusiasts tend to go for like jvcs and so these older high-end dlp units from some of these other manufacturers that maybe don't even make them anymore you know this whole thread was dedicated to talking about them and finding them at you know bargain bin prices and it got me interested and i followed that thread it was like 300 pages long at the time for months I would just, when I had free time, scroll through and just read. I read like however many hundred or thousand posts that were in there and got a real good education from a lot of guys that are on that forum that are knowledgeable that had these older high-end units. And so I started watching and trying to search out a high-end like DLP unit that I could use, you know, and replace here in the home theater that would be kind of like not at an end game level, but almost an end game level projector for me. And that's when I stumbled across the one that's up on the wall back behind me, which is the Knoll Systems LED 1081 projector, uh, which as I mentioned in my detailed home theater tour, that projector is essentially a Vivitech projector. It's a 9080 FD that's just rebadged by Knoll Systems. Uh, but that projector was again, somewhere in the project production time of 2010 to 2013. So at this point in 2024, that's between, you know, 10 to 12 to 14 years old, you know, somewhere depending what the actual manufacture date on this unit would be. And it was extremely high end at the time it came out. So back, say it was 2010 or 2011 when that unit was produced, that thing was like, I think like somewhere between ten to fifteen thousand dollars, which it was considered one of the most like elite high end projectors you could buy at the time, barring buying an actual movie theater projector that would go in an actual movie theater. And its big claim to fame, the Vivitech and then ultimately this Null Systems version, is the fact that it's a three chip LED projector. So it does not use a lamp. It uses a red, a green, and a blue LED chip to produce the light in the image that comes out on the screen. So that also drew me uh, to buying that unit because there's no lamp replacement costs. Um, you can get like 20,000, you know, 10 to 20,000 hours of use out of those LEDs before they dim to the point that they're unusable. You can buy replacement LEDs. Uh, yes, you're probably going to equal out the price of buying, say, all three LED chips for the price of a more high end uh, lamp for like a JVC. You know, say it's three, four, five hundred dollars for a genuine JVC replacement lamp. You're going to pay that for those three chip. Uh, LEDs to put in this unit, but they're going to last another 10 to 20,000 hours. Whereas a lamp is only going to last you, you know, maybe 2000 hours, 3000 hours at the most, depending what settings you have. So there was that. Also the fact that since it is an LED projector, there's no rainbow effect because a lot of DLPs that are lamp based have a color wheel that cycles. And that's how you get the color in the image produced with the lamp, you know, shining the light. So if you're sensitive to rainbows, an LED projector doesn't have any of that. So you don't see rainbows, or if you do, it's in extreme, extreme circumstances where you have to have the perfect kind of movement speed across the screen and like squint your eyes and shake your head. You know, you gotta do a lot to actually see them, but under normal viewing conditions, you'll never see rainbows. So it had long life without a lamp replacement, no rainbows. The color is arguably the most a satisfying uh, and accurate to my eye color of any projector I've ever had. <laughs> so there's that as well. Also has lens shift, granted it's manual. Uh, we have to use a little like um, Allen key, Allen wrench to kind of move the lens shift, which is a bit of a pain, but it's also really nice because on some of the other projectors, the lens shift would bobble um, with the powered lens shift, like on the JVCs. Since this is an Allen key and you tighten it down, 
uh, the lens shift doesn't bobble. So I put that up there and that image has stayed locked in on my screen. It's never moved once in all the time I've had this up here. So there's that feature. The clarity, the sharpness, uh, the black levels could be better, but the color is way better. Bright level content is way more satisfying on this one. This projector is the best projector I've ever owned. And I only paid $500 for it. It was $499 with free shipping and taxes included through a seller on eBay. And it's the best projector purchase I've ever made. And I have no real uh, inclination to get rid of it. It's only got about 7,500 hours on it. Conservatively, I've got maybe three to 4,000 hours left on the high end. I've got another 10,000 hours left on that thing. So I have no interest or inclination to get rid of it. Yeah, that's been the best projector purchase I've ever uh, made. And it's quite a difference from this original unit that I have here all the way through everything else that I've gotten to all the way up to that. And it's, it's crazy because that's the oldest projector I've ever owned. It's even older than this one here. Uh, but that is the best projector that I've ever owned. You can find a lot of these older projectors uh, for relative bargain bin prices and get some pretty high quality stuff out there. Uh, which leads me to my last point. Really the only projector that would be an end game projector over what this one is that I would get, and it's only from reading through the forum on AVS forums, would be a Sim 2 Miko projector. Uh, granted, like a Christy Titan would be nice, but those things weigh like 150 pounds or more. There's no way I could mount it in here. <laughs> but a Sim 2 Miko 40 or 50 seems to be like the very top of the line, like creme de la creme of these style of projectors, being LED units, high native contrast, dimming features that are smooth, that aren't aggressive, uh, that you won't even notice to help with the black level. The lenses are interchangeable so you can get really high quality cinema grade, like movie theater quality lenses to attach. Uh, so that would really be one of the only projectors that if I found one in a reasonable price, because those even now, uh, those still go for like a thousand dollars or more, unless it's really damaged and you gotta do a lot of repairs to them. Uh, but anything in working order for a Sim 2 Miko is gonna be at least a grand or more typically. And I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> but that would be the only projector, at least in the foreseeable future, until 1080p is no lo longer viable, which I don't think is gonna be the case anytime soon. Uh, that I would replace this one I have with. Um, like I said, it's the best projector purchase I've ever made, the best projector of, I've, I've ever had down here, and I highly encourage people who are interested in this hobby to kind of look and try and explore those options out there because you can find some really good deals on some really high-end equipment for a, a good price. Um, so yeah, so that's going to kind of wrap up this video here today. Uh, as I always say, hopefully I didn't drone on too long and kept this kind of interesting for you guys. Uh, so, like I say in all my videos, um, I appreciate all the support. Uh, like and subscribe if you will. That really helps me out. I really appreciate it. And uh, look forward to some more content coming in the future. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.